For this video, I'll be walking you through how to style a range input fill, sharing with you the gotchas and tricks involved with in going around and styling this very interesting HTML tag. I have here a simple input of type range with min and value of 0 and max of 20. On the CSS side, I simply have a body style that centers everything, as you can see on the right panel here. I also box size border box everything, so the dimension I set takes in consideration padding and border of the element. Right off the bat, when you look at the plain input range, a couple things is not evident. Just by looking at it, you don't know what is the range to select from, and you also don't know the current value selected. And the way around it is to add extra markup to provide the user with those information. Since this input field has accessibility built in, screen readers can access this information easily. So what I do is use pseudo elements with CSS to add those information in. I simply add a before pseudo element with CSS and set its content to be the min attribute using CSS attribute function and the after pseudo element with the max attribute as content. As you can see, I have those values in the input itself. And if I want to position them, I could use margin to distance them from the input or position absolute them. And just like that, I visually know now what's the range of the input. To show the value, there is a way I can do it by using the output tag in a form. I give the output a name so I can access it and I also connect it to the input using the for attribute, which I now need to give the input an ID for. Then on the form, I listen to the on input event and I set my output to be the input value. As you can see, it is quite a problem to set this up and you don't need a form every time you want to add an input range tag to the view. I will show you another way around this in a little. Now, the reason you want to style your input range is because the way it looks naturally varies from browser to browser. And as a developer and designer, you want your users to have the same experience no matter the browser they use. If I inspect this tag, I can show you a couple things inside of it that we can use. By the way, the bar is called track. The little circle you see that indicates range is called thumb. Here inside you can see the track, which is a div of pseudo attribute WebKit slider runnable track. And inside of it, we have another div with ID of thumb. So to access these two parts, we need to use prefix pseudo element selector. And for Safari and Chrome, it is called WebKit slider runnable track and WebKit slider thumb, as you could see when I inspect it. And I am using Chrome, so I'll focus just on that for the styling. If you want to target other browsers, as I know you should, on Microsoft Edge or IE, the track is accessed with MS Track, and on Mozilla Firefox, it is called Moss Range Track. For Thumb, it is MS Thumb on Edge and Moss Range Thumb on Firefox. I will leave them comment out so we can focus on the styling, and you can check it later when you visit this file. You can't nest this selectors comma separator for these styles. You must duplicate the style block I am about to write and change the pseudo element selector for each one. Whenever you want to style a native tag, the first thing you do is remove its appearance. I'll also add its prefix as well and you see that the track now is gone. It has no styling. If I tap on it, it receives focus and Chrome adds a blue outline on elements to show focus. If you don't want that like I don't, you can set the outline to none or to whatever style you want to override it. I also like to give inputs and buttons a pointer cursor since browsers don't do it. I'll also make it 200 pixels wide and with that I'll make my track a very dark gray, 5 pixels high and round this corner by 3 pixels. And just to play safe, I'll also remove its appearance here as well and same for the thumb and like that the thumb also loses all its styles. So I'll give you my favorite blue background, make it 6 by 20 so we can see it. Then I'll shift it up with the margin top of negative 7 and round its corner by 12 pixels. I'll inspect the input again to see if I can find any other style to override. And it seems it has some margin left. So I'll just read of it and make some adjustments so the numbers appear over the line. We still have one last issue, which is the user still does not know what value they picked. For that, I'll wrap it in a label tag of custom range slider class, then give it a label that screen readers can access. 
and to make it appear on a new line i'll turn it into a block with display block so it takes full available width and give it some top margin to distance it from the label a bit for the label i'll make it position relative since i'll position some elements absolute to it and give it a padding bottom a space for the element i'll put there that way if some other elements is placed right after it the hanging element does not sit on top of them i'll also make the label gray for contrast and the rest of the work will happen in javascript and i'll come to css in a little i'll first grab the label and call it range label grab the input which will be the first child i'll pen a span tag on the fly right after the input itself the span will have the current input value and the class of bubble Since we can see it now, I'll style it by first giving it a gray background, make it an inline block element since pen tags are inline elements. Make the text white and position it absolute, left zero for now and about 45 pixels from the top. But you might have to change this from a top to a bottom if you label very size and is not constant for some reason. That way, no matter if the label exists or not, it will always be positioned from the bottom, relying only on the bottom padding of the label. Give it some padding, round this corner by three pixels and shift it with 50% of its width to the left. I'll also change its background on label hover to a nice blue and transition it so it is smooth on the eyes. Now back on the JavaScript, I'll listen to the input event on the input and I'll extract few things from the input using the JavaScript destructuring and I'll get the min, max and the value. Then what we need to know is the total range so we subtract min from max. The reason you do that is if the min is 10 and the max is 25, the range in this case will be 15. So that's where the user needs to select from. He has 15 values to select from. With that, we need to figure out what percentage of this total value the input value is. And for that, we need to subtract min from value and divide this result by total. And the reason you, you subtract min from value is to set the value between the range. So if the value is 10 and 10 is same as min, it should be 0%. Our percentage variable will hold values between 0 and 1, by the way. Now I'll grab the range bubble, which will be the second child of the range label. I'll position it using percentage by multiplying the percentage by 100, so we get value 0 from 100 now. Then I'll set this content to be the new value. But when I take a closer look at this, I want you to pay attention to a couple of things here. One, the bubble is not aligned with the value 2. The thumb of the slider always stay inside of the track. It starts left the line and ends right the line to the track. This is done by translating the X axis by percentage of this position on the track. And if I try the same thing, we see bubble with the value behaves the same way now. But what I want is the bubble to stay aligned with the thumb in the center. For that, we need to know the width of the thumb. And if I look in the CSS tab and we see that I set it to six and I'll create a variable here with six. And what we need to do is shift the left with an additional half thumb width plus the percentage of that thumb width. Before we try this, I'll first move it to a function so I can call it in the beginning to position it initially. And it seems I have a typo here. It should be divided by two and not three. Now, when we look at the result, we see the bubble aligned center with the thumb. And like that, we conclude this range styling process. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye bye.